put a mark of leprosy on a house. The one who owns the house, so let's talk about God's house. Who owns the house? God. 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 Okay, so the, just picture when it says the owner of the house, it's God. It's God. And the priest who's going to come in, who do you think that is? The priest, we are the priest. Jews. Who's the priest? One priest. Yeshua. 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 One priest. That's Yeshua. So here's God the Father talking to Yeshua about God's, the Father's house, which is Israel and all the believers, right? Where does it say that Israel and all the believers are God's house? Where does it say that? That Israel and all the believers are God's house. Where does it say that? Don't you know that you are the temple of God? No, that's Corinthians. It says you are living stones being built, being built up into a spiritual house for God to offer spiritual sacrifices in, right? That's in 1 Peter. Exactly. Yeah, chapter 2. 1 Peter. Okay, so when it says God's house, picture all the believers and Israel, Okay. Verse 35, God, who owns the house, will come and tell Yeshua, something like a mark has been visible to me in the house, in my house, in God's house. The priest shall then order, Yeshua shall then order that they empty the house. That's the furniture. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. That's the furniture. Uh, and you said, we're, we're the furniture, the people are the furniture, right? Yeah. So that's God, that's Yeshua taking people out of God's house. Mm -hmm. I think we can also say it applies to Lepsion. I think. Yeah? Yeah, yeah makes sense. Taking people, but I believe in a bigger sense, this is what's going to happen to the body of Messiah. God's, Yeshua's going to yank people out. They'll be cut off. Well, it doesn't say that yet. All it says is I'll be yanked out. No, it says that elsewhere. Yes. So everything in the house will not become unclean. So you get all the furniture out. Now we're in 36. Afterward, verse 36, afterward the priest, Yeshua, shall go in to look at the house. So he doesn't become unclean. Verse 37, so then Yeshua will look at the mark. If the mark in the walls of the house has greenish or reddish depressions, in other words, it's deeper, it's beneath the plaster, and it's gotten into the stones, and it's infected them. Then Yeshua shall come out of the house, verse 38, to the doorway and quarantine the house for seven days. You said seven. The kid was seven years old. Yeah. Girl. The girl. girl. Yeah. The priest shall return on the seventh day, and inspect, and if the mark has a spread, if the infection spread in God's house, the priest shall order them to rip out the stones. And these are people. You are living stones, right? Yes. So these are human beings that are being ripped out of God's house. This is not the Jews. This is now the Christians. And this is why I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna talk like a prophet now, and I'm gonna prophesy. So if I'm wrong, you can call me a false prophet. I don't care. <laughs> I, I really don't care because I, I know what I'm seeing, and it's growing. It's getting bigger and bigger to me. God is gonna start pulling people that are infected, and I mean infected with Hellenism out of his body so that Hellenism can get out of his house. Problem is, you can't do that without taking the people out. Right. And that's the problem. That's what we don't want. We don't want the people to suffer. They are going to suffer. And this is in, quote, the church. This is in the body. This is in Messianic Judaism. This is in the Hellenistic regular old church. This is in Catholicism, in Protestantism, in every facet of God's body. He's going to start pulling the actual people out now because they are infected with Hellenism. Okay, it's not over. It's not over. Can I say something? Not yet. Hold on. 
So they rip the stones out with the mark in them and throw them away at an unclean place outside the city. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Mm -hmm. You'll be cast out outside the, the gate to an unclean place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's it. Get home. Where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Outside. You'll be thrown outside. Okay, I believe this is what Yeshua is quoting here. I might be wrong about that, but that's what I believe. I believe that when Yeshua is quoting about being thrown outside the city, that this is one of the verses that he's quoting. These are the stones, the people being pulled out of the house, thrown out into a trash pile outside the city. Garbage pit. Fits. Garbage pit. Right. <laughs> outside the city and he shall have the house God's house scraped all around on the inside that's not <laughs> gentle yes scraped just scraped scraped and scrape all that nasty paganistic mess that Hellenism off the plaster Got not it. a gentle process not a gentle process so You know, I, I hate to apply it to this congregation, but I think that's what's happening. Can I say so. something now? Yes. Um, there was a story I wrote, uh, and the character, the bad guy, that's trying to take the stone from this little boy, I named him Akbar. And the reason Akbar, I named him Akbar in the story, is because it's a mouse. Yeah. Okay? And you saw mice. Well, the, the word Akbar is, can also be Akbar. Okay, and Achbor is an Edomite. Hmm. Okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. You're going to have to hold on because we're not there yet. We're going to get there. Hold your horses, honey. Hold your horses, honey. Hold your mouth. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Okay. I mean, I read this and it just, it just goes through me like fire. He shall have the house, God's house, scraped all around on the inside and they shall dump the plaster that they scrape again off at an unclean place outside the city this is the infection of paganism everybody bitches and moans about the jews that they rejected yeshua and that's why you know horrible things happen that's not true the reason that they're being punished by God is because they rejected Judaism and they turned to Gentile ways. Mm -hmm. And he says it a hundred times in the, in the prophets. So you've amazing. turned against my mitzvot and you've turned to the ways of the Gentiles that live around you. And he says it a hundred times. Crystal clear. And then there's one verse that says something that sounds different and everybody goes to that verse, but it's not true. The truth is, the Jewish people have turned against the mitzvot, and that's why, that's the uncleanness of paganism that God is trying to beat out of them and scrape off of them, and now he's gonna do it to the body of Messiah. And I'm telling you this because I've been in this for 44 years, and now I can see it happening that in the body of Messiah, it's gonna be so hard to turn somebody to Judaism now. It's gonna be so hard to, turn, to sell Judaism to, to believers because they're gonna be in the midst of being scraped, just like what happened with, with that pastor. That's what was happening. I was scraping the inside of the house. I wasn't trying to hurt anybody. All I was doing was scraping the inside of the house, scraping the paganism off. And I was doing it, you know, pretty gently. And <laughs> that wall came up in his eyes, and that was it. That was it. I'm not having it. Okay, so I believe that this is going to happen more and more and more. Because it says, verse 42, then they shall take other stones. Other stones. Other, stones other stones and replace Ooh. those stones, okay. which stones. I believe is what you were saying. Yep. People come in. And replace those stones, and he'll take other plaster, different plaster, and replaster the house. 
which is Judaism. Yeah. <laughs> Different teaching. Remember what Yeshua said about the plaster on the, how did he say it? Um, he says, you're like a house. He's talking to the Jews that had been Hellenized. And he said, you are like whitewash. whitewash. Well, white, it's not white. Whitewash is plaster. Oh. That's what it is. You're like plastered tombs that on the, you know, they're pla they're replastered. They look real pretty. But on the inside is dead man's bones. Right. That's what's going to happen. He's going to scrape the Hellenism off of his body. And I predict, as a prophet, I am prophesying. <laughs> I predict, and I'm not a prophet, but I am prophesying that it's going to get... You're in the office of the I'm in the office of, thank you very much. I'm acting in the office of a prophet that it is going to get worse and worse and worse for the believers to even think about Jewish things. Mm -hmm. That they're going to start shutting things down quicker, faster, and then God's going to judge them fast. Much more intense. Much more intense. Much faster. Now, at the same time, People are going to be in there plastering and plastering and plastering and plastering mm -hmm. with Hellenism as fast as they can to like make music and dance and, and fun and parties and all kinds of you know, fun things to draw people in. So I think both are going to happen at the same time. But I'm telling you, mm -hmm. this is what's going to happen to the body, to God's house. It's God's house. Now, how do I know this? Go to Acts chapter 3. This is how I know it's going to happen. See, God can have his picture be messed up. Yes, he can. He can't. I don't know. God's got to have his picture the way it's supposed to be. If we don't paint his picture... Oh, okay, yeah, but he has allowed it to be messed up for 2,000 years. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm trying to tell you that now... <clears throat> It's coming the time where he's like, I'm not going to allow that anymore. Yeah, right. right. I don't want to show that to you. Acts chapter 3. Where are you going to go? Acts 3. I don't think there's any. No, no, no. Yeah, no, one doesn't have it. What do you got? It's not? Yeah, it's yeah. not there. Get, you guys don't have a Bible? Here, I'll, I'll quote it. Here. Acts chapter 3. What? It's. And there, it's circle. What verse is that? 21. 21. It says, he tells the Jewish people, Peter's telling the Jewish people, repent, do teshuvah. Why? So that times of refreshing can come from the Lord. And he can send back Yeshua. Right? Yeah. He can send Yeshua back. When? At the time. Appointed time. At the appointed time. Appointed time. When God restores all the everything, He restores all things. Mm -hmm. It's the time. What does He say? That's been spoken of by who? Long ago, by the holy prophets. Okay, you know what? They drop out the word "all" from there in Greek, and I checked it yesterday. It does say in Greek, "All my holy prophets, all prophets, all." That means even today, that every single prophet is shown that time period He's talking about. The restoration of all things, which is the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. All prophets see the day of the Lord. All of them. And in order to restore the house, it first has to be clean. Well, sure. yeah, that's it's true. simple. His house is freaking filthy. Yeah. Well, yeah, if it's not clean for it, you should put new stuff on there, it'll get infected too. Yes. Just like the verses. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Now, that's exactly, I believe, what has happened. <clears throat> that what people, Messianic Jews, have tried to do is, like you said, put a kippah on Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. right. All that is doing is putting more stuff into the house that's going to get infected. Right. right. It's, it's not anything new. It's the same old stuff. You know what? When growing up, <laughs> growing up... Eileen, she had her hand up first. I was, like a millisecond. I was talking to, to Mama Sweet because uh, I was reading in Romans. And it's like, just because we have, like, grace now, do we forget about the Torah? And it's like, Absolutely may it not. never be. May it never may be. May it never be. I'm like, does, do Christians, like, not read 
read this part? Mm -hmm. It's like yes, they no. read it, but they read into it. They don't it. understand. Like, that's what still, it means. Still, your mind should still be on the Torah. Yes, that's exactly right. And then, like don't sin and stuff, but it's just like right there. That's it's right there, and there are hundreds of other verses that say virtually yeah. the same thing. Yeah. But but the problem is they read it through lenses that that cause them to read into it. I'll give you an example. It's taught this verse. Yeah. This verse I just read to you, that we just read in Acts chapter 3, I just read a whole article about this verse, and it totally twists it. And it says, what it's talking about is that Jesus has come, and that his blood has washed us, and that's what our mind is supposed to be on. And then it ends. It stops. Yeah. So where, where is all the prophets have spoken right. about that day in which all things will be restored? Yeah. So, yeah, so they read into it instead of reading it. All right. Wait. I'm sorry. Say, go, go ahead. I to say, growing up, um, my dad used to get this stuff at Houston, God, God Budo, that he would put on the wall. But it was like a lime, limestone, I guess? Lime. lime. It was lime. And he would go, go get it at the... Um, the poop place. Yeah, what, what is it called? Is it like the, the, the re, this, where they redo the water. What's it called? The reconditioning of water plants. Like the where sewer, the, like yeah, the yeah, sewer yeah, yeah. plant. Where they take the sewer water and clean yeah, it. Yeah, they call it water plants. Okay. Water plants. Well, okay. okay, and it was a line, but water he would he would go water purification. He'd, he'd get the house, and oh my God, he'd have to do all this scraping and stuff so that the the new line would stick. But he'd have to scrape it first. And then he'd get these buckets, and it stunk, and we'd have to help him. But we we would put that stuff on there, and it was just, a, the line was a beautiful white when it would dry. The house was so pretty. But it, it the point is, it was, my dad always did this in the springtime, and it was, that scraping would take place, and then the line would go on. And basically, that's what was is being talked about there in the house, scraping the house and then putting the plaster. Right. It's time. So, it's time. I, I believe. It's time. Yeah. It's time to do that in all the churches. Yeah. I believe that God is going to do that. But notice, who is the one that God called into the house to do it? The priest. Who is? Mashiach. Yeshua. Yeshua. Think about that. It's not, I mean, think about that. What's being scraped off the walls, I'll just make it super simple so you can understand it, is Christ. But who's doing it? Who's doing it? Yeshua is the one doing it. So, I mean, I, I just, it seems very logical. That ain't me. <laughs> that ain't me. Get that off the walls. So, I mean, just to make it very simple. But I, I, I truly believe that this is what's going to happen now. It's not going to get easier. It's going to get harder to invite people into Judaism. Not easier. Harder. Because this is going to be going on. And most will probably become more resistant to it. Oh, harder. I want to say something about pictures. About pictures. This is so amazing. You know how president from Iran, uh, he went and knocked into a mountain, and then they they all got killed because they it was very cloudy. He couldn't see. That the that's the picture of uh, the mountain. It's the day of the Lord, the kingdom, and it was cloudy, meaning he's not going to be able to get into the day of the Lord mm -hmm. to the kingdom because he wasn't able to see the see kingdom. Mm -hmm. He couldn't see. He couldn't see. Okay. Crash and burn. Now, yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to decide which way to go. So, uh, the, the prophets, what do they do to the grain? They roast it. They roast it. So that means what's coming out of their mouth. Fire. 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 And that's why they don't like us. Okay. But we're supposed to be doing that with each other, too. Right? Yeah. We're supposed to be refining each other, too. The prophets. Right? Yeah. So when somebody talks to me, as I was spoken to earlier, I was listening for God's voice. That's what I always do. I listen for God's voice. What is God saying to me about me? What do I need to change? That's all I care about. That's all I think about. Especially during counting the Omer. Right. 
because I'm terrified. I'm literally terrified that I'm going to miss what God is doing. I'm really, really scared about that all the time. Like, you know, God's saying something. Like, wait, 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 wait. I didn't understand. I missed it. Because I don't understand a lot of things. So that really scares me. So I always try to listen. What is God saying to me? What do I have to change? What do I got to fix? So that's what the prophet is supposed to do. Open their mouth and fire comes out. But every prophet is shown two different things. That's the mouth. But every prophet is shown two different things. What are the two different things that all prophets are shown? The, king, the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is, okay, we'll do that one first. Kingdom. The kingdom. We just saw it. All his prophets, right? Yes. In Acts chapter 3, who he spoke through the mouth of all his prophets, the time of the restoration of all things. Okay, that means that he's going to take every single prophet to the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Does that mean they know it's the day of the Lord? No. 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 They just have these bad, scary dreams. I know I had a bad, scary dream. But the reality is they were probably taken to the day of the Lord and saw and experienced the birth pangs. They saw it. I'll just, I'll just give you one example. Go to um, Jeremiah 30. Verse 3, days are coming when I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel and Judah. I will also bring them back to the land and I, that I gave to their, their fathers, and they will possess it. Now these are the words which the Lord spoke. These are words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel. For thus says the Lord, I have heard the sound of terror. Doesn't that make it sound like the person like actually heard something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That means they're there. Cries of panic. They're there. They're there. Terror without relief. The prophet Jeremiah is there in the day of the Lord, hearing and seeing stuff. Well, the cries it says here. Right. I've heard the sound of terror, of dread, and there's no shalom. Ask now and see mm -hmm. if a male can give birth. Why do I see? He says. Why do I see? Every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in childbirth. How can he see it if he's not there? Right. Yeah. Okay, so all the prophecies about the day of the Lord, they're going to show stuff. And that means that the prophet was really literally there. And I know Eileen has been taken to the day of the Lord because she had scary dreams when she was a kid. And, she's, and since I've known her, she's been taken to the birth pangs in the day of the Lord. And he showed her. And she heard and she saw. And I've talked to many, many other prophets that told me all these scary, weird things. And I'm like, simple. Simple. They were in the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes? You know, you're saying, you're, you're bringing up that scripture, and it immediately made me think of a dream I had, and I know I shared it with you. And it, it started out, this, first it was just this big, beautiful, long, 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 long table never seen a table so long it was just like endless and and we're all gonna go sit down to eat at this meal and it's just amazing and then it immediately it goes into some another scene and I'm not I'm not gonna say all the details but the one thing that was so amazing was that I could see these Jewish men on tables and it was like they were giving birth and they kept pushing mm -hmm. like they were giving birth and then I kept seeing this water I thought it was water but it was blood okay. that was okay. I gotta keep saying it it was just blood that was so so high like almost up to your knees and I thought it was raining but it wasn't raining what the shininess that I was seeing was the glistening of these these knives against the, the moonlight and they were just going down and they were they were killing okay Jews. so so I don't want to go into too much detail so 
you were she was literally literally taken Hearing to and seeing all of that. the day of the Lord yeah and she saw it and she heard it this happens to every prophet but most you know and, and I'm talking about even prophets who are not believers to them it's I just had a weird dream I just had a scary dream right let me show you another one go to Revelation chapter 1 Chazon chapter 1 all right here Revelation 1, verse 10. And I checked this in Greek, so I know that this is accurate to what it says. I'm not making this up. It reads very, very badly in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, what does it say in the Bible? If we say that we have uh, not... No, no, Revelation 1.10. Oh, you're in John. I was in the spirit. Go ahead. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Okay, that's what it says in English. I was in the spirit on on the Lord's day. So, what do all the uh, Christian um, theologians say? It was Sunday. Exactly. That's what they say. It was Sunday. But what it says in Greek is, I was in the spirit unto the the day of the Lord. Seeing the day of the Lord. I was in the spirit unto. I was taken unto. Two. Uh, that That's what it says in Greek. I was in the spirit, and I was taken to what? The, the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. What? What is Lord's day? It's day of the Lord. Right. Mm-hmm. So he was literally taken to the day of the Lord. Now this, I mean, we could go on and on and on showing. I could go on and on and showing you many passages where all the prophets are taken to the day of the Lord. And they just wrote what they saw. Okay, so that's one thing that all prophets see. What's the other thing that all prophets see? What needs to be fixed. Wrong. Uh, But good guess. They're they're bad. That's what he's saying. What needs to be fixed. No No other guesses? Uh, well, We're just guessing. That's all you can do is guess. Same thing, same. Okay. Okay. How about this? How about the pictures? Pictures. Yeah. Now think about this. This is this is this took me years to figure out, but I'm a hundred percent convinced of it. When you have a word from the Lord or a dream or a vision, you see all this weird stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You see all kinds of weird stuff. And you go, oh, it must mean, and I'm, you know, of course I'm mocking. I, I don't, I'm not mocking anybody in particular. I'm just saying, you know, this is what our minds do. Oh, it, it's from God, so it must be something. But I don't know what. Okay? That is so dumb. <laughs> it's just such a dumb thing to do. If God is speaking, what language is he going to speak in? Our language? No. All 70 times. No, That's no. interesting. Hebrew. Whatever language you're going to hear. No, he's going to talk about pictures. Yes. That's his pictures. vocabulary. That's it's the, the picture. Way, that's the way I mean, that's what's in the book, right? Right. 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 He, 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 he gives us millions of pictures. And then what? He's going to give us words from the Lord that are different? No. That's just stupid. Hmm. How stupid? What kind of stupid God would that be? Here, I'm going to give you this book with every single image that I've ever come up with. Here it is. There's A through Z. Now, I'm going to speak to you 1 through 20. Completely different. God, how stupid that would be. So here's what I believe with all my heart. That every single thing out of God's mouth is totally mysterious to us because we don't know this book. It's that simple. We are so ignorant. If God shows you a shoe... In, the, in a dream or a vision, what does it mean? Yeah. If he shows you the moon, if he shows you intestines, what does it mean? You can't make it up. You can't go, oh, it, it must I mean think, this. I think, this I think maybe it's this. You can't do that. The, you have the, to the know. That's like the <laughs> you have to know what the vocabulary means. Because he's speaking in it. And by the way, he can do this in all 70 languages. He can do it with New Guineans who don't know anything. He'll give them a dream. He'll give them an image from his vocabulary. 
Oh, it must mean that you are supposed to become my 43rd wife. You know, they just come up with whatever. But the truth is, he's not going to change his language for anybody. Now, once he's super, super nice. So once in a great while, he'll speak to somebody where they're at. But I'm, I'm telling you, he doesn't do it often. But people think he does it consistently. He doesn't do it consistently. Consistently, he speaks in his language, and we have to find out what it means. But once in a while, he'll, he'll bend and he'll go, you know, this person is so dumb <laughs> that I'm just going to talk to them where they're at. Maybe that'll help. And sometimes it does. But more often than not, it doesn't. It makes them, it confirms what they already have been taught, which is nonsense. Give you, I'll give you an example. I knew a Jewish guy who was learning pictures, and he was doing good, but he was really struggling with the image of Yeshua. He just, he couldn't get rid of that Hellenistic Jesus Christ from his heart. He just couldn't get it out. And I tried, and I tried, and I tried to, you know, talk with him. And, you know, sometimes I wasn't very nice. I, I became a jerk. But for the most part, I just really tried to get him to see. And he was studying. He was doing pretty good. And, but he was on the fence about it. And then he had a dream. And in the dream, Jesus came to him. Jesus came to him and spoke to him. What, what Yeshua said to him was perfect. And I knew exactly what Yeshua was saying because I knew the words from the, from the book. This guy didn't, but I knew. But he came as Jesus mm. and it knocked him off the fence. Mm. And he just gobbled up Hellenism and that was the end of the story. Wow. So more often than not, it doesn't work. So I think that, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, I think God more and more is going to be sticking with his vocabulary. And he's not going to make uh, adjustments for pagans who think paganly. Because all it's going to do is reinforce the same garbage on the walls of the house. And that's right. what he's trying to get rid of. Right. So that's, like that, that part's my opinion. It's like that scripture that says, um, you for your part do not go to them. They come to, to you. Yes. And that's exactly what... Talking they, to Israel. Talking to you, Israel. You, Israel, do not go to the other nations, to their gods. They Make they them come, come to you. you. Mm -hmm. And it is the same exact way with God. It's like, you know, we go to God. You know, Jew, Gentile, anybody. You go to God, you know, to get the truth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So that's the prophet. That's the prophet's job. One word is mouth. Two words are what? Sight. 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 Okay. So two thirds of it is sight. Only one. Th only one third is speaking. So let's get back to the speaking part. We talked about the sight. What they see is the day of the Lord, and what they see is what? Pictures. Of Pictures. Of things. God speaks in His pictorial language. All right. Now, when God is going to clean his house, he calls in Yeshua to, to examine it, right? Right. But he can't call in Yeshua until what? What did it say? Uh, what happens before he calls the priest in? Furniture is taken out. Thank you. All the furniture is taken out. It's just the furniture. It's not the walls right. or the stones. It's just the furniture. Right. But sure. they're there in the house. And they've got to be taken out. Okay. Sorry. So now you have the most popular thing in all of Christianity. What is it? What's the most popular thing? Christmas. <laughs> okay, one step below Christmas. I'm sorry, you're right. One step below Christmas. What's the most popular search on the internet? The most, the thing that everybody wants to know and everybody's Church interested. In. Part. No, no, they don't care about that. Tribulation. Jesus no. Christ. Jesus Christ. No, because they hear that every week in, in church. The thing that they're not taught that they want, everybody wants to gobble it up. All you have to do, any search you do about anything for, about believers, this is top of the list immediately. The the the. End of the days. End yeah. times. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The end times. Yeah. <laughs> Prophecy. Yeah. 
right? End time prophecy. Right. Everybody wants to know about. Oh, that's this. what they're selling in the internet. That's what you find. That's all you find. Uh -huh. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. <clears throat> Top of the list for searches is end time prophecy. Here's the thing: there's no such thing as current events in prophecy. How do we know this? It's all future. How do we know that God doesn't even talk about it? How do we know? Is there anything he talks about the day of the Lord? How do you know that? Well, it says in that day. How about what we read in Acts chapter 3? The day of the restoration of all things that I spoke by the mouth of the prophets. The prophets. All, prophets. all prophets. Thank you. All my prophets. All my prophets. So everything in the Bible is about the day of the Lord. Right. Not about current events. And yet, end time prophecy, it's all about current events. So again, they're digging in the wrong place. So here's my point. This is why I bring it up. I'm not bringing it up to slam anybody. I'm bringing it up because, in my opinion, this is my opinion, that if God is going to scrape the walls of this house, and if God is going to pull the stones out and pull the furniture out, you got to judge where the lepers, where the tsara'at is in the walls. Who does that? The priest. Yeshua. Yeshua, okay. Who judges if the prophets are speaking the right thing in end time prophecy? God. God. Really? What about us? We can't judge? It's wrong, it's evil, it's garbage. Right. Okay, yeah, but everybody does that. Everybody does that. If you're not 100% right, you are a... Yeah, because we... we you're a false, false, false prophet. prophet. That's word. That is a, where we can judge. False prophet. Yeah. yeah, but we don't know God's word. That's the problem. Exactly. We don't. I'm going to say it again. If you're not 100% accurate in your end time prophecy, you're a... False, false prophet. prophet. False prophet. Okay, you that's what everybody done. says. It's nonsense. That is not scripture. You're a false prophet. It's very, very simple. The prophets are subject to the prophets, right? Yes. Where is that in the Bible? Anybody know? Uh, Acts uh, 10. No. The prophets are subject to the prophets. Let a prophet speak and then everybody judge. Where is that? Oh, my. Deuteronomy? Oh. Yeah, that's a New Testament. But you can't, you can't think of like where it is, like the setting in which you live. Okay, I'll say it again. Let all the prophets speak one by one, and then let everybody judge. Let the prophets be subject to the prophets. Book of Acts? No. no Corinthians? It's Corinthians, what it's talking about. Prophecy. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, I think. So when people read this, what they usually think of, it's in the church, and people are prophesying in the church, but that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about in any synagogue or congregation where prophets speak, their words have to be subject to the prophets. Hmm. Right. I think it's chapter 11. No, chapter 12. And that's it. Chapter 14. I was so close. Wait, before we read this, in Numbers chapter, oh, 11, Eldad and Medad were among these uh, 70 elders, and they were, all went out to the tent, except Eldad and Medad didn't, they stayed in the camp. 
They stayed in the congregation. And they started prophesying. And Joseph, I'm mean Joseph, Joshua said, Moses, shut them up. Because they didn't go out there with us. And they didn't get the Holy Spirit like we did. And Moses says, I wish that all of God's people were what? Prophets. I wish that all of God's people would prophesy. That's what Paul says here. Isn't that cool? He's quoting that here in, in, in Corinthians. Because it's bigger to prophesy, it's bigger to prophesy than to Right. Okay, chapter 14. Pursue love, pursue it, but desire earnestly spiritual, spiritual things, but especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue, he doesn't talk to people, he talks to God. Nobody understands what he's saying. His spirit, he speaks mysteries. But one who prophesies speaks to men for edification and exhortation by the way, exhortation means rebuke. It's not like, oh, correction. do good. Every, it means correction. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, rebuke or, or exhortation. And consolation, just the opposite, comfort. One who's, uh, okay, but when he says here in verse 1, you know, I desire especially that you would prophesy. I, I really want everybody to prophesy. That's what he's hearkening back to numbers about Eldad and Medad. Okay, verse uh, 22. So then, tongues are for a sign to those who believe, for believers. But to, I'm, I'm sorry, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. It's like, it, it's a sign for unbelievers. But, not to uh, but to those who believe is prophecy. Prophecy is the sign for those who believe. In other words, that's what helps us, is, you know, helps believers, prophecy, prophets, speaking. <laughs> if therefore the whole congregation should assemble together and everybody speaks in tongues, nobody's going to know what's going on. Verse 24, but if everybody prophesies, and an unbeliever and an ungifted man enters, he's convicted by everybody, he's called into account by everybody, and the secrets of his heart are disclosed. You couldn't do that in any church in America and get away with it. Nobody wants their sins exposed. Their secret, but that's the job of the prophet, is to scrape the junk off the walls. They open their mouth and fire comes. The secrets of his heart are disclosed and he'll fall on his face and worship God. What a joke. Declaring God is certainly among you. What a joke. You can't get away with this. Every time I say something true or honest, Christians get totally offended and that's the end of it. Okay. So, what I want you to see is verse 30, uh, no, no where he says, I desire especially that you may prophesy. Because he's hearkening back. And then it says, and I don't know where it is, that the spirits of the prophets be subject to the prophets. And the problem is I don't have my, my notes. I don't have my notes, so I've got to find them. Can anybody bring up their notes that I sent? Prophet, there we go. There it is. We need this verse. It's 32. It's 1432. 1432. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. All right, verse 31. For you can all prophesy. prophesy. You can all prophesy. One by one. Doesn't mean you have to be a prophet. But you can prophesy. You can fill the the role of the prophet, the, the, the job. Everybody can prophesy one by one so that everybody can learn and everybody can be exhorted or rebuked. 
And the spirits of the prophets are subject. That means under the hand of the prophets. What does that mean? Under the hand of the The prophets. You're judged by the prophets. What does that mean? That the words of the prophets are subject to the prophets. What does that mean? Well, Miriam was the prophet of the prophets. No, Elijah was the prophet of the prophets. Was it in Miriam? No. What does that mean? Well, Let the spirit of the prophets be subject to the prophets. If it's the word of God, the word of God that is has been written already, the prophets that are, that they're what they saw and what they heard, um, the words that come out today are subject to that. Is it true? Does it go along That's with it. what has been written? Does it go along with what has been written? But there's the problem. What's been written? Garbage. No, the Torah. The, Torah. the Torah. problem is people don't know the Torah. Torah. Right. So you have a dream about a mouse. It's, oh, it means this or that. The truth is, that mouse, that image of the mouse, is subject to the prophets. So where do you go to figure out what the mouse is? The prophets. To the prophets. Right. That's all it means. Wow. It means every, every word that comes out from a, a nowadays prophet has to be subject to the Tanakh. I told Mary. Has to be subject to the Tanakh. I tell her, she's a prophet. And when she dream, has dreams, she tells me in terrible. Speak up a little, please. When she has dreams, she tells us our, her dreams. And we we can't, he can come up with one idea. I can come up with another idea. I tell her, you, I mean, the end of the problem, you guys need to get together and speak about your dreams so you guys can just what you just said. And, and the only reason is because we know the Tanakh a little bit better. That's mm -hmm. all. We know a little bit more vocabulary. That's it. We don't have any authority or anything nonsensical like that. We know the Tanakh a little better. We know where to find a mouse. We know where to find a shoe or a stone or whatever the image is or the word that came out. We know where to find it, most of it, not all of it. We're still learning, but we, we got a little bit more info, that's all. But you're right. Okay, now go to Amos chapter seven. I believe with all my heart that God is gonna start scraping the house. And God is gonna start pulling stones out of the house. And I believe with all my heart that judgments are going to be made according to Judaism in order for that to occur. Amos 7.7. 7, 7. 7, 7. Thus he showed me. This is what he showed me. Look. In other words, he's seeing it. He's actually seeing this. Look, the Lord was standing by a vertical wall with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, what do you see, Amos? And I said, a plumb line. And the Lord said, look, look, I'm about to put a plumb line in the midst of my people, Israel. And this was Israel. But all the Christians say that they want to be part of Israel. Okay, fine. The plumb line's going to go for you too, baby. They don't want that. In the midst of my people Israel, I will spare them no longer. The high places of Isaac. Do you know what these high places were? Pagan worship. Right. Pagan worship. Not Jewish stuff. Pagan stuff. And he says, the pagan high places of Isaac will be desolated. And the sanctuaries of Israel. Sanctuaries, plural, of Israel. You know what that is? That's not north, uh, southern Judah. That's northern Israel. Amos was a prophet to northern Israel. And that was rife with paganism. Mm -hmm. So the sanctuaries were not... Uh, They're not the sanctuaries. No. Yeah, not, They're, not, not yeshivas. No, no, these are not yeshivas. <laughs> these are pagan high places. Pagan temples of Israel. So this is the Jews turning to paganism. 
And God says, I'm going to drop a plumb line in the midst of all this paganism and just scrape it all away. And the sanctuaries of Israel will lay, be laid waste. Then I will raise up against the house of Jeroboam with the sword, etc. But he can't do that until there's a judgment made that this ain't plumb, baby. And it is not plumb. The house of God is not plumb. The house of God is crooked as it can be. And then on the inside, it's completely filled with paganism. And God is going to start scraping it off. And it's not going to be a gentle, pleasant process. It's going to be rough. It's going to be hard. And I can be as nice as I want to be. It's not going to change a single thing. Yeah. And all the other people, and there are, I'm not the only one saying this. I've actually seen other people who are saying this, believe it or not. It's like Job when he had the white blisters and scraping it with a stone. Oh, it's like, that had to hurt. That's, that's <laughs> exactly right. Okay, so now we're going to finish up with the mouse. God showed you the house three times. Three times. Three different times. Your house. My house? It's because you're a Jew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Panina was there. Yeah, always. She's always there. Because she's a Jew. She represents that she's a Jew. That's, okay, okay. So, it's a Jew house. Yeah. But it's got mice in it. Yes. Okay. D different sizes. Different sizes. Okay. Different sizes of mice, of mouses. So what is that? What do you think that is? Unclean animals. Okay. Is it like enemies in the house? Okay, so what does Akbar mean, Eileen? Do you know? So it's an Edomite. Okay, it's two things. It's it's a, a go, it, it just a go, yes, gobble, eat a gobble. that's what it means. Yes, it means an eater. It means a gobbler up. And then they were making noises, and then uh, they were making noises, and then she was like, like stay quiet. All right. Well, maybe I wasn't being so kind. I was telling them shut up. Shut up. Okay. Yeah, and that's yeah. What happened to me. Yeah. Yeah, you were telling them to shut up. Sure. Stop what you're doing. Okay. Listen. Listen to what I'm saying. Akbar means to eat up, right. to gobble up. All right? No. What did you say? What else does it mean? I can't hear you. Why are you saying it means an Edomite? Because that's one of the definitions. When you, when you, um, when it's, you know how you see uh, Akbar, and then when you look on Strong's and you can add a Vav, and it's, it could be Akbar, and Akbar is an Edomite. Okay. Achbor was an Edomite. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean Edomite. He was an Edomite. Achbor. His name means mouse. Okay. I don't want to go too deep into this, except to say, who's Edom? The church. The church. Rome. Well, Rome. Okay. Rome. Hellenism. Hellenism. There's Hellenism in the house, but not just in the house. In the oven. In the oven? Okay. In the, the wall. In the oven. The oven is where the, the food is cooked to them. eat. Well, it's all, all any food all will food. be cooked to eat. Right. Real food. I mean food, yeah. not garbage. Food. Torah. Okay. Torah. 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 Being good. Go to Isaiah 66. Now remember, these are Jews that he's talking to. This is Isaiah. He was in the south talking to Judah. He's talking to Jews. And to these Jews, this is what he says. Is that 66? 66, verse... Verse 7. Wait a minute. Not 7. Not 7. Verse 3 first. We'll do verse 3. He who kills an ox is like one who kills a man, mm. a murderer. These are your Jews he's talking to. He who sacrifices a lamb is like one who, one who breaks a dog's neck. He who offers a grain offering 
is like one who offers pig blood. Why? I'm sorry, there's one more. He who burns incense is like one who blesses an idol. Why? Because they chose their own ways mm -hmm. and their soul loves these abominations. Okay, these are the ways of the Gentiles. And they love it. The Jews love it. Okay? He's talking to Jews, remember. Well, let's go to verse 16. The Lord will execute judgment by fire. By fire. That's what comes out of the prophet's mouth. And by his sword on all flesh. And those slain by the Lord will be so many. Those who sanctify and purify themselves to go to the gardens. Look at me. Is that a good, is this good people or bad people? They're cleansing themselves and purifying themselves to go to the gardens. No, this is good people. Get in and clean. No, they're back to the good. They're sanctified, they're clean. Okay, here's why they're sanctifying and cleaning themselves. Following one in the center who eat pig's flesh, detestable things and mice, they will come to an end altogether. Not good people. These are Jews. This is Israel. And they're filled with paganism. And God is going to judge it. Hmm. He's not going to judge Judaism. He's going to judge by Judaism. Right. That's the plumb line. To that's the plumb line to judge all the paganism. Out of the Jews. And so what is happening? Yeah, out of the Jews first, and then out of the quote church, because they want to be part of Israel. So fine, you want to be part of Israel. You're going to get what Israel gets. <laughs> We're going to have the paganism, the Gentile ways taken out of us. So you're going to have the pagan ways, Gentile ways taken out of you. And when they feel that pressure, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when they feel that pressure, I'm out. That's, that's right. So um, this, I mean, boy, I really, really wanted to teach this. So I'm glad you had those dreams. <laughs> I guess we should pray.